So guys, uh, Carlos here. I'm going to show you guys a way that I would highlight. Uh, everybody's been asking about the Captain Gravis armor. I know I'm not going to do the armor. There will be a uh, tutorial for that coming up soon. But this is the same way I would do it. And by same way the recipe is, is that we're going to go in with our base colors. We're going to hit the highlights with white. And then we're going to cover it with our top highlight color. That process that I just said, going back in with white and then covering with your top highlight color, you can do that over and over and over, and that's going to continue to add depth. I probably, I think the longest I've gone is maybe I've done that three times. Uh, there's a delicate balance to be, to be had. You need to make sure that you don't get a lot of spatter with your white. So the proper white takes experimentation. Um, other painters that I've read uh, they like to use Tamiya white and I believe they use it with the lacquer thinner the Tamiya lacquer thinner um, I don't know ratios but that's one white that I've been told does not spatter a great deal and you can hear the outside and the compressor because otherwise I'd have to wear a mask and I don't have the ability to add a second audio stream yet <laughs> uh, anyways uh, so here we go we're going to go through, we're going to keep, this is just the base coat, and you can see I've done a little masking. I'm not huge on masking, um, the way I use the airbrush now, I don't really try to do complicated effects with the airbrush, I rely more on the paintbrush for those kinds of things, like power weapons and uh, non-metallic metal. I've been known to do a power weapon or two still with the airbrush, but I kind of, I'm okay with the, uh, the paintbrush nowadays that I don't need to mask off as much. So, anyways. so this color is like a dark purplish reddish brown it's part of the uh, Arbuckle brown it's Arbuckle brown it's part of the steam and punk set from fantasy and games which is kind of for doing leather and non-metallic metal uh, gold and copper and brass and uh, anyways it was nearby and it'll probably work with this red so that's why it was selected for that reason <laughs> It's not going to appear anywhere else on the miniature, though now... Actually, no, I take that back. If I do non-metallic metal gold, it will appear there. So, I'm going to go back with the second coat, and this is something that everybody tells you. You go light, and then you go back in with another layer. And see, even here, if I get up around this armor right here, if I get onto that kind of, uh, this little border, I can always go back and just paint that with blue. That's why I've only, I've masked off the top because I, I have airbrushed the, the armor and I'll show you how the armor looks at this point. I'll go back in with another layer and then I'll show you the captain's armor. See there's like a little, there's a little uh, white spot there, that's okay. We'll get rid of that. So uh, I'm not sure if it's transferring but it's starting to acquire that very darkish brown kind of color. This color is great. It's like it's like super dark brown, red, purple color. The, and when it dries, it dries like kind of almost like black. It's a fascinating color, and I'm glad I have it. I can't really recommend one painter over another. And Ben comments he uses Vallejo, Games Workshop, Army Painter. So really, it's not the paint. Don't let anybody tell you that there's like it's the paint. It's not the paint. As long as your paint is fresh, as long as it's good, or at least as long as it works, it's fine. That's all you need. Hobby paint. Okay. Okay. So we got our we got our golden white in there. It's coming out okay. The raised area. So first I'm gonna start out from a distance on this larger area. You see that? And actually that was got a lot into there. So we can come back and correct that. But really with this technique. You don't have to be too precise. If you want to get like perfect ridges and, and really with this airbrush and a person who's good at this, they should be able to do this. You could draw like a real fine line uh, down the that wrinkle in the cloth. And if you practice enough, you could totally do that. I would need to be a little closer. Oh, it's starting to spit. I'd need to be closer and I would need to uh, probably use both hands to try for something like that. Kind of spraying a little, not quite where I expect, 
but it's okay. I'm gonna hit that line. And now I'm just gonna make a more pronounced line along this ridge. And what this is gonna do when I go back with my highlight color, I'm gonna be able to use that to really make that that standing out highlight. I saw a video by, uh, I forget who, but he had the most amazing red. I forget what he did. This red, this will be this will be good enough. I, I'll I'll be happy with this when I'm done. But there's there's like some there's some very talented people out there. All right, so there's another line complete. I'm just with white. White is a very chunky paint. White, you get a lot of dry tip. Regardless, I've used. This is called fluid, so that means that it's already got, like when you when you put them on, when you put these golden fluids on a palette or anything, they just kind of slide around, they skip around, they're so fluid, and they don't dry, uh, hence the name. But even so, on the on the airbrush tip, they get, uh, they build up very quick. That's just that's. When you start learning more about white and about airbrushing, airbrushing white is terrible. And that's why people prefer Tamiya. Tamiya, solvent-based, lacquer thinner. You're not gonna get as much buildup. And you're gonna be able to spray at real low pressure with those Tamiya. Um, they're called acrylics, but really their they're, they're solvent is some kind of lacquer. And they're from Japan, so. It took me a white. I'm going a little harder. I'm feeling bold. We'll see what happens. And even if I'm filling it in, I could always fill it back in with my other shadow color. So we still have the shadow color in that cup. I'll try to catch this final ridge. I'm kind of dialing this in. I've got it figured out where it's at. Well, I did. So I'll go bold here. I know that the guy's backpack's gonna be up here somewhere. So I can kind of start here, figure out my distance, figure out my location, and then build towards the end. And there's probably a better technique out there. Um, when I learned to airbrush, uh, I watched a video and the guy said, air on, and then you're going to snap the trigger. Paint, but air is always flowing. And that's how you, that's how you, like, to learn to get better, that's the way you have to do it. Air on all the time, then paint. So you, you you need to be very quick and precise with the trigger, and that's that's where it all starts. So that's how I do it, uh, and I haven't, I'm not, I'm not ready, I'm not ready to go pro yet. I'm not going to be doing T-shirts on the boardwalk or anything, but my miniatures, it seems to work out okay. All right, so I'm gonna hit that final ridge, and I'm gonna go with red since, oh man. Every captain ever on the ultramarines has a red cape. Really missing it. And so now I'm just gonna go back over. I'm gonna re-emphasize these this white towards the end of the cape. And if it looks real bright and crazy, that's okay. You can always fix it. And let's say, let's say I go back in with my red, or I go in with my red for the first time, and the cape is a mess, and it just looks like there's no shade or no, there's no real definition to it. It's a lot easier to glaze shadows in than it is to create highlights. So, oh, better make sure it's coming out. Okay, so it's coming out. Uh, a little hard. I'm spraying at about 25 psi, and right now I'm just I'm I'm lowering the psi with the Mac valve right now. You can see all that leaking. I need to fix that. I uh, I I need to get some beeswax or something and uh, seal up those threads. The whole point of this thing is that it's supposed to put all of the air towards the uh, miniature. So obviously, if it's leaking, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. All right. So back to the model. Okay, so I'm going to build this up very slow, very slow passes. I'm not going to let it run, so I'm just going to go by and then go to a different area. 
and see this patchiness that's been created with the white I'm gonna be able to get rid of that after I go back with my glazes so I'm not as concerned with the patchiness I could do it with the airbrush I mean I could sit here and airbrush this thing all day and I'll get to eventually a satisfactory result I just kind of wanted to show some of the process so see that how it's kind of pinky we're gonna keep these edges until the very end and we're going to continue to emphasize we're just going to go layer after layer so this is actually we're airbrushing a glaze on right now as we speak but we need that darkness back so i'm um, building back up and if i put red over the over the real dark red it's i'm probably never going to be able to cover it it's always just going to look like a very dark dark red Whereas this white, even if I cover it with almost 100% opacity, it's just going to be this really uh, bright, clear red, the scarlet. So that's why we go back, That's, or I'm sorry, that's why we create the artificial highlight with the white. And like I said, we can go back and do that multiple times. The more we do it, the more depth we'll add. So we'll do it once just on this video. I had, I didn't have a plan going into it and I refuse to but we'll see how long it takes so I'm gonna get down a good glaze first and we'll go back in with white and the problem is is that if I had thought this through then I could have had two airbrushes ready one with white and one with red but how much fun would that be okay so the patchiness is almost gone up here you can see it's still a little patchy right there uh, let me get a pointer I was going to hold the airbrush with my mouth, which I have done. Don't do it. Don't hold your very expensive airbrush in your, in your teeth, kids. So right now, you can see up here, there's still patchiness. And there's still patchiness right here. The more layers I add, and if I go back in with sh shades or glazes, I'm going to make those disappear. And one of the reasons that we are going to glaze, no matter the outcome, no matter how incredible this looks, I like to add a little color variety and people probably won't see it they won't see that you add purple or blue or green because what all that those colors are gonna do is just make that red pop a little bit more so the glazes of different colors are actually adding interest without the viewer really knowing it they just know that what they're looking at is a very interesting and cool red about this airbrush is it's got the MAC valve. So I was able to adjust the pressure for the red. Now I'm going to adjust the pressure for the white. I'm actually going to go with less pressure this time because when I start out, I want to see where the white's going to land. Last time it kind of landed in a funky spot. So now I'm straight on. Should land where I want it to. And then we're going to... We're going to hit those edges again. And the more I do this, the more depth I add, the more richness. This is pass two. If you want, you can do three passes. If you have an airbrush, you can see this effect for yourself. Remember, air on. Oh, I'm starting to get white flex, so I need to clean off. Air on, paint on, paint off, air off. Air on, paint on, paint off, air off. That's how you airbrush. Say it at home. Air on, paint on, oh, paint off, air off. I'm just moving the trigger slightly. These golden high flow at lower. We're going to add more white. Maybe this is a Dunkirk theme weekend. Since Dunkirk is coming out, that's why we have all these planes, you know, doing operations. So, last part. More white, hitting the edges, hitting the tips. 
and I'm going to make it pure white. I'm going to go as bright as I can just to see what it looks like. And I know that with the red, I'm going to be able to reclaim it. It's going to look just fine. The brighter I go, the brighter my white's going to be. That's what I want. I want the brightest red I've ever seen. And it'll show in your model. And if your model, you don't want it that bright, you can always tone it down. You can always tone things down, but it's really hard to tone them back up. So in this stage, if we go ultra bright, if we go as bright as we can, if we go like crazy day glow, my little pony, uh, pink and red, that's fine. We'll be able to bring it back, but we'll not be able to add it again like we can right now. Hit the edges again. Turn down that red just a little bit. Don't need as much air pressure. Just need to mist it on there. And now I can just mist it on. I don't even need to really be specific. I don't need to target the area. I'm going to mist it on. I do this five, six times. Thin coats. It's going to dry off. And that red's going to be. Well, it's going to be a thing of beauty. So, just keep doing it. This is the same thing I would do for the blue, although I wouldn't do it nearly as much. Uh, I want a very bright, uh, clear blue. So same process, dark colors, spot highlights. If it's not bright enough, I go back in with the white highlight and I do this again. And this is mostly not for the uh, bright highlight effect, but for the weathering to show up against a very dark background. If you choose a very dark blue, you will not be able to see the weathering. So mostly that the blue is chosen for the ability to weather it. But if you like that blue, if you want like a, like I used it on a librarian. Uh, if you go to my Instagram, you can see the librarian I painted. And it's a great uh, blue for a librarian. Um, yeah. So anyways, here we are. The red's looking pretty nice, pretty rich. I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm not going to do much more to that um, other than paint in the... Uh, details and maybe a rip or a tear or a cut and that's it this is done oh and I'll probably glaze in some shadows I should say anyways thanks for watching guys I hope you guys uh, found what you wanted to this is the same thing I would do for the blue the colors would be different but the process is exactly the same dark base color white highlight light uh, main color over the white and then repeat you can do it as many times as you like until you arrive at the color that you want it's simple once you learn how once you have an airbrush and then it just becomes um, another tool in the arsenal no secrets here guys all right like comment subscribe keep painting keep believing peace out